Hello there. Here is another video in my quest to upload once a month. In this video, I would like to discuss something that is very interesting to me. Radiation. Specifically, the radioactive element inside most household smoke detectors, americium 241 Now, before we get into this, we have to discuss some basics of nuclear physics. First of all, what are alpha particles? Alpha particles are helium nuclei which are ejected from unstable nuclei of heavier atoms, like our friend americium. Next, I will briefly explain how an ionization type smoke detector works. Basically, there are two electrodes, one positive and one negative. Under normal circumstances, the americium does not affect the normal air, therefore not triggering the alarm. However, when particulate like smoke enters the device, the smoke gets ionized by the americium, allowing electrons to flow through the circuit, therefore triggering the alarm. Lastly, I must quickly explain why these types of smoke detectors are not actually dangerous like you may now think. First of all, americium mainly emits alpha particles, which cannot even penetrate thin wood, let alone the thicker aluminium and plastic casing of the detector. Also, the other gamma that americium does emit is such low energy and in such low quantity that it does not travel very far and cannot penetrate very deep at all. Now let's measure the smoke detector for noticeable radiation. For this, I will use a Geiger counter equipped with a pancake probe, which can detect alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray radiation. As we can see, there is nothing that we can detect, even when we put the probe right next to the ionization chamber on the smoke detector. The only small clicks that we hear are from background radiation. But wait, what is background radiation? Well, background radiation refers to the natural radiation that we absorb every day from natural and artificial sources. As we can see from this chart, some of these sources include radionuclides in the soil, cosmic rays, radon, food, and a small portion of artificial sources like x-rays and other medical scans. I will now use a different type of detector to demonstrate the radioactivity of americium. This detector is called the Radiocode 103. It uses a scintillation detector, which I will explain shortly, to detect mainly gamma rays, x-rays, and hard betas. This detector can also perform gamma spectroscopy, which is where the detector measures the energy of each gamma photon that it detects and puts it in a graph or spectrum. This spectrum is like the fingerprint for each radionuclide. This spectrum of americium-241 has two main peaks one at 26 keV and the other at 59 keV. keV, or kilo electron volts, is simply a measurement of tiny amounts of energy. This is an image of a scintillation detector. You can see that it is a solid state crystal, unlike the Geiger Müller tube or the pancake probe. The light from the scintillation crystal is the crystal turning gamma photons into visible light, which is then pumped through a photomultiplier tube and then the energy of the visible light is measured. We see that the radio code can detect something from the smoke detector, as it shows around 2 times background, which is around 5 cps, or counts per minute in my lab. This means that the detector is picking up on the low energy gamma photons, which are emitted from the americium. At one point, the americium even sets off the detector on my radio code at around 5 times background radiation. I now have an ionization chamber, which I previously ripped out of an old smoke detector. It is crucial that you do not try this at home, as it may be dangerous and also possibly illegal depending on where you live. Shown here is the tiny button of americium inside the smoke detector. I will now measure the radiation coming from the detector with my trusty pancake probe. We now see an actual increase in radiation now that we have no plastic and no air gap in between the detector and the ionization chamber. Lastly, I will use my friend the radio code to see if I can pick up on anything now that we have less material blocking any radiation coming from the ionization chamber.
Well, that's for sure a result. We can see it peak at around 35 times background radiation. Quite impressive. As a quick bonus, let me show you some radioactive glass containing americin from the first nuclear explosion, the Trinity explosion. This radioactive glass is actually fused sand from the extreme heat of the explosion. What we're detecting here are mainly fission products from the plutonium explosion, such as cesium-137, strontium-90, and of course, americium-241. Thank you so much for watching this video. As I said before, I am trying to upload a new video every month now, so expect another video very soon. If you want to further support me and this channel, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or to my Patreon, or both. Both are completely free. Also, thank you so much for over 170 subscribers. I really appreciate it. I honestly did not think that the channel would grow this quickly. Have a great day. Bye.